Hey everybody, Rodman here, and thanks for tuning in to episode 19 of Stationeers. So last episode I was working on uh, isolating power and working on my control room. The control room will be a spot in the base where I can sort of control remotely all of the individual um, networks and systems um, from one big dashboard. Think Homer Simpson in the nuclear power plant. I don't really know what his job was, but he certainly had a lot of controls at his desk uh, that he used as a table for donuts, mostly. Uh, I hope I am not a Homer Simpson this episode. I hope I'm actually productive and uh, not just sitting back and being lazy. So let's get to it. Uh, the first thing we were doing is adding all of our new solar power panels that we added to the data network. Um, so that they can inherit the logic that is required to control them. And I will fly up here to add to said task. So eventually we will have 10 panels per network here. There will be a little bit of inefficiency because these solar panels are going to block these solar panels around uh, dawn. And then these solar plant panels will be blocked by these ones at dusk so it's not perfect to have them in this close proximity but it does save me some um, uh, headache with uh, cabling and all that oh speaking of headache come on okay so these are also gonna run the same data so I don't have to reinvent the wheel or design a new IC housing or anything and as you can see uh, the only issue with them is they're rotated 90 degrees so I am uh, I'm gonna have to rotate them, aren't I? Uh, they have to be oriented the same way. So let me go ahead and fix that. All of you that probably saw me do this and was like, oop, he's gonna have to uh, correct that error. Yeah, there you go. Joke's on me. All right. Luckily, I have a big battery in my uh, screwdriver, so I can remove these pretty quickly. Alright, so power has to go this way. Yes. So the purple is going to be data. I'm going to have to re-cable some of these things. I apologize. It's my error. But these things happen. Okay, um, now let's go rip up the purple cables so that we maintain its color. And these will have to be on the other side of the panels. I'm going to set these cables aside and combine these with this ones. So my data for this will run out like this. I probably also need to move that APC that controls it all. Uh, honestly, if I have a control room, all of my APCs might want to be in said control room. Uh, that will be a cabling nightmare, but that's a lofty goal. Except for maybe the APC for the entrance, for the doors. Uh, that APC should be outside in case I'm locked out and the battery's dead or something like that. I'm far less concerned about being locked in. If you're inside of a problem, you can usually work your way out. If you're outside of a problem, sometimes it's tricky to work your way in. That's sort of an abstract comment there. But all right, so now um, the reason why they're not automatically moving is they don't have class. So they're not solar panels yet. They're solar panels in progress. And I do have room to expand this out to 10 panels on each battery uh, when we need to. All right, perfect. Now, put these away, and where did I put my glass? 
I see my still frames are down here. Let me combine these with my other still frames. And this is not the glass I was using. I had a stack of glass. There it is. Up here. And then the moment I finish off these panels, they should spring into action. I like how they're not doing that. Uh, and that is because my IC housing ran out of power because I cut power to it. Yes, that would be a thing. Let me fix that. Done. Don't cut the power to your uh, solar logic. Okay, so now all these are on and they're all moving in unison, all generating power. Now the power that uh, the new panels are producing is not um, being harnessed. It's not being put into my battery or anything. So I gotta fix that. So I'm gonna run cables down here so that they don't interfere with my um, logic cables. Set them on a different level. But most of this cabling is exposed, so if anything was to burn out or something like that, I can fix it pretty easy. Uh, how to avoid this memory elegantly? Uh, it's going to be inelegant, I think. All right, we'll just put a corner here. And then a corner like that. That's not so messy, I don't think. Oh, come on. Can't fit through there. Okay. And then these will go down. And junctioned. So now that I have some solar power panels on the purple battery, uh, as long as this kit battery is turned on, it should be charging up. And there it is, working as I had uh, predicted, intended, and designed. I don't think I'm going to have enough uh, purple cables to finish this job, or maybe just barely. I want my wire cutters. What I want is to combine these just barely. Oh my goodness. Two, one. <laughs> okay, so now this battery is being charged by six solar power panels um, at about 450 watts a piece. That's pretty good. And to confirm, uh, we can always, now that it's isolated, we can always just. Um, slap my little network analyzer on it and we will see that all that's on this network is the stationary battery and six panels uh for you know quite a lot of power being added pretty nice and the idea is to put all of my kit batteries in the same room so that's just the first one and this uh purple cable network will be for my atmospherics. So I have to redesign the power grid a little bit to suit that um, new design. And I am using copper like a fiend, so let me keep arcing more copper. Bye bye potato. I guess while I'm standing here waiting on my um, cables to make, make another big potato, I have a very scurvy inducing diet here. <laughs> very, very scurvy inducing diet, but that's okay. Scurvy doesn't exist in the game, not yet at least. That'd be a little bit too complicated. I figured if you have a, um, a space base, chances are you have a daily multivitamin. Uh, maybe it doesn't act actually have to be functionally in the game, but I don't think that this game needs to worry about diseases just yet. 
There's so much more to add first. Hello, big potato. I'm gonna push you strategically through my helmet and somehow feed myself with you. Alright, we'll just do batches of... F oh, I was gonna say 50, but I guess it's now 51. We've got some steel sheets that I should put over here. Man, do I ever love my backpack. Uh, did I use up all my purple paint? Uh, it's not in my suit or backpack. I'm just going to print up some more. Maybe I didn't, but... Uh, it's just easy, easier to crank out a few extra cans lying around. Because I'm redesigning the cable network for it, uh, I'll put purple paint in my backpack. Oh no, here it is. 84%. Oh, yeah, there was a lot of paint left. Okay. So if I am um, going to change the network that my atmospherics are on, that means this kit, kit battery will stop feeding it. So I'm sort of curious, first off, uh, how much power is being drawn from this kit battery? 835 watts. Uh, if we take a look, um, we've got some a lot of the active events. That's 100 watts a piece, and a lot of things that are unpowered. And then the powered up things, as you can see, the closed things aren't really drawing any power, and there's a lot that is unpowered here. Um, so, potentially a full atmospherics running uh, would draw a lot more power than what is currently running, because what is currently running is um, maybe a third of what I'm going to need. The pumps aren't moving, and, you know, all, all this stuff is sort of stagnant. Uh, so, what I can do before I switch batteries over, I'd like my this kit to, to charge up a little bit more before I swap them. Uh, but what I can do is to recable this, or just uh, because I have a lot of spray paint, and it's probably faster, although not more efficient, to just paint it all. Uh, I am going to paint all the cables. The very ends of the cable, for aesthetic reasons, are going to remain the color that they are. Um, you know, the ends that are orange for the orange network, orange gas, they can stay the same. Uh, but all of the cables that are installed in place are going to become purple. And purple will be atmospherics. Additionally, I can uh, take my labeler and rename the uh, battery that I have as the atmospherics battery. And then I'm going to have uh, my heating and cooling battery and so on and so forth. Uh, this stuff here is impermanent. I don't plan on having it laid out like that in the future. Actually, I'm sort of curious what my pressure is at. I'm going to vent out some. And then I think I'll probably end up using volume pumps and not these uh, uh, pressure regulators. So pressure regulators are great for small changes. Um, but pumps and vents, active vents, are required for larger volumes. Um, so there has been a discussion on the Discord about how I was going to do about, go about it and all that stuff. Um, I think volume pumps are really the, the way to go here. So let me go shove my old pressure regulators through my centrifuge. Uh, print up some more purple, purple paint. And eventually get some volume pumps out there, too. Alright, that's probably enough purple paint. Uh, let me put away one of these stacks so I can make sure that my materials don't drift away. So eventually I will have logic that controls overflow and that good stuff. Um, but for now, 
the cheap and easy way is to just have it be manual, not automatic. So having a manual system for pressure override is, I wouldn't say sloppy, it's just temporary. It's quicker, it's easier. Um, I guess I had a cable analyzer here, huh? Yep, and that allows me to grab, to just look without my network analyzer, uh, what kind of power I'm using. I forgot that I had placed it there. But uh, that's probably, okay, so these red ones are temporary. I'm not planning on having my act events out here. You know what? Maybe I could. There's not really a good reason why I wouldn't have constant input. So let's, whoops. Let's go ahead and plan on these being permanent. Some of the cable corners are um, a little under the earth, but that's okay. I'm gonna need, now that I've decided to have these be a permanent fixture in this base, so that we're always pulling in new oxygen and nitrogen, primarily, um, I'm gonna need some more coloring. I have probably a lot of copper now. Yep, 216. Good, good. And I have all this gold. I'm going to slap this gold into the pipe bending unit just so it's not floating around. And all these rarer materials I'll put into the locker. It always, I, it's never, I can't remember a time when stuff that, oh, purple, purple, too much purple. Uh, stuff that I was working on or rather materials that I have, that's too much purple, whatever. It's too iron, I think I'll survive. Um, disappeared, meaning that like ores that are just laying around, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Ores that I, uh, were laying around never sort of like disappeared for me. That has never happened, um, for the record. I've never seen that happen, uh, but it always worries me to keep items sort of free floating like that. because. There is the possibility that it um, it rolls away, or uh, more than likely what would end up uh, sort of getting rid of it would be if I had some sort of um, uh, pipe explosion that generated force. Uh, so this, this here, this kit battery is being removed eventually, so I'm not going to paint that. Uh, but if it generated enough force to blast those ores away, it'd be really challenging to then find those ores again. Uh, because they would be, you know, scattered uh, pretty far. My control station eventually might have things like um, filter health and that kind of stuff, but initially it's just going to be monitoring power and, that, and the, the very basics. Um, the, once I have like an operational base, I can add complexity, but I'm not going to add the complexity beforehand because I worry that I'll never ever move in. You know, if I'm constantly trying to have complicated logic, um, in my systems, you know, I'm always going to be, oh, just one more system. Oh, just one more logic, uh, and never actually be able to use the base functionally. It will be an art project, not a, uh, a living space. Okay, so we have purple cables. Operation purple is completed. Uh, one of the things I need to figure out is now I need to power my... Um... Oh, you know what I could do? I could have... If I just have a big battery in this APC rather than this small battery, uh, there's no way a day-night cycle will drain it. And then I'll have, um, I could even have an independent solar power panel charge it or just have it draw off of, um, the outflow of my, um, my power network. Yeah, so meaning that this giantly inefficient long cable is no longer going to be required. So let me, uh, let me ditch this last bit of purple. 
It's funny, actually. I thought I made too much, and I made just enough. Um, so what I'm trying to say is, let's clean up some of these cables. So this here, this APC, will be powered by the purple, by the atmospherics um, power network. APC corner down there we go I guess actually you know what I need I need uh this should really be all be in purple to designate the true color it's sort of sloppy to do it this way uh but it shouldn't have any real drawbacks other than the fact that you know the, the pros is that uh Is that the date? No, that's the power. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. Very, very wrong. Cut. Uh, what it, what's happening, ending up happening there is um, that the APC is being drawn down to the kit battery. That's why I had it set up that way. Okay, now I understand. Um... The solution would be to just have a dedicated solar power panel for that APC or to move that APC um, honestly to move that APC into my control room uh, the way I sort of want it to be and then to run a cable all the way out for the solar power logic inefficient but um, I will be able the, the net benefit is that I will be able to all control it from my control room which um, is exactly what I want so let me let me do that uh, so what I'm gonna want is for now to throw a large battery in there so my solar power panels don't um, lose their ability to track and that's a very temporary solution um, while I engineer a longer term solution so what I'm gonna be doing is removing some of these cables I just really temporarily put them down, but that's not where I permanently want them. And uh, the funny I, uh, result of this is I'm going to have to run these cables again, but I'll just run them more neatly is the difference. Because this is sort of sloppy and leads to this APC that I'm phasing out as well. Okay, so uh, that means that... I want, I probably want a kit battery of um, too important to fail systems that all draw from the same battery very, very gently. Too important to fail would be, uh, oops, I need my gold, like doors and solar tracking, those sort of uh, really important systems that when they go down, um, the whole the whole system sort of fails. So this battery can represent that system. And this is too important to fail, and it can be in uh, some other color. I'll have to decide that color soon. Uh, I think we're just about ready to swap kit batteries here. And that's going to be really easy, because I've already laid out the, the network. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So before I combine it, because I don't want some sort of weird overflow issue, let's go ahead and cut this old stuff out. Which then, as you can see, if you look at my monitors and all that, they all turned off. Filtration and pumping and all that fence don't work. And then plug them back in. Uh, Oh, actually, no, no, no. I did that wrong. Glad I caught that. Uh, this probably, truth be told, needs a different color because this is the power input and this is the power output. 
and they're different. They're functionally different. Uh, but I'll have them on the same color, because I've designed it that way. I don't want to don't want to put the crazy amount of effort it would take to fix that. Because I've been running around painting everything. Alright, so everything's back on, and now everything's drawing from this battery here. Um, let's go ahead and put the cable fuse as a very stopgap measure. Um, oh, it takes a screwdriver. Uh, the cable fuse uh, right at the output here. Actually, you know what would be good? Is to show what it looks like to have it uh, fuse out. So this cable fuse, let's go and put it as a one kilowatt. Um, and then we want our network analyzer. And what I'll do is I'll, uh, I will purposely fuse or short out my cables. Um, I just need to get in here, over here. This requires a hand drill. Oh, I thought I had my hand drill. Hand drill to deconstruct. Okay, so we have uh, 728 watts being drawn. Um, the quickest way to kill it, to short it out, would be to slap on a heater. So let me go crank out a heater real quick. And I will try to heat iron, gold, copper. Okay, I got all that stuff in here in spades. And this is just to demonstrate how the fuses work. And uh, I can keep the wall heater because eventually I'm going to need to add heaters everywhere in my base. And coolers. Alright, so if we want to short this out, all I got to do is slap a heater right here. And you will see what it looks like for fuses to blow. So now, oh, is that, no, it should be drying. Uh, okay, um, hmm. it's not heating because it's not, uh, it detects that there's no point to heat, I guess. I'm trying to think of something else that draws a lot of power. My beacon could do it. The beacon is a 300 watt device. That's weird to think that I'm struggling trying to break something, right? There we go. It blew out and my fuse controlled where it blew out. So it blew out where the fuse was installed um, rather than some other random cable deep within the purple network here. Uh, but the thing is, if I turn this on, uh, these small cables can handle five kilowatts, um, and obviously I didn't, I didn't uh, overload it. I just artificially overloaded it with a the fuse. Reinstall that back there. Uh, so it doesn't hurt to have fuses, but at the moment, I, d I know for certainty I don't have enough to cause any long-term problems here. All right, so this battery here, as I said, will be the too-important-to-fail battery. Um, and we will start to run that power, but I think I need to choose another color. So I'm going to choose green. And we will start to run those cables. So these cables are going to be for airlocks and uh, logic systems that can't fail, like this APC here. So what I'm gonna do, just to make this look nice nice, is to run, I'm only really gonna have like maybe a few, very few solar power panels on it, because the idea is it's not gonna draw a lot of power, 
um, airlocks, or like the, you know, the airlock systems and everything don't use a lot of power. Um, so we just need a lot of power storage, we don't need a lot of power generation. And I'm trying to do my best to run it nice and parallel with the last network, just so it looks pretty. Looks like a data trunk. And I am using a whole lot of my jetpack. I should also... Oh, yep, the uh, volume pump has been keeping the CO2 from overpressurizing. That's good. Oh, oops. Let me fix this. Not to mix colors here. Okay, so the inflow here will be green. Now the only, uh, l the one of the issues, of course, with the um, uh, running a bunch of my batteries all to the same place is it's gonna require uh, a considerable amount of um, uh, cabling. But the cabling is cheap and the benefits of having all of my power and controls in one big room is uh, priceless. So first off, this will draw, and you know what I might do is I might have my green network here. Um, I might, what I might end up doing with this green network is powering it up as if it's a, uh, like a critical system with maybe like four solar power panels or something like that. Plenty of power, um, making sure that even when everything is drawing power at maximum, uh, it, it still is in the positive. And then additionally, if we were really concerned about redundancy, I could also add a, a coal uh, power generator. So in the case of a brownout, you can always throw coal into it and um, have that coal generate power. All right, so this is the inflow. And although it's kind of uh, a bad idea, I'm going to have the out be on the same color. So my plumbing over there is like pink and purple, right? But here it's green and green and purple and purple. It's, it's not, not great. But as long as I can follow what's going on, I think it will be okay. I think what I'm going to do is run this um, parallel underneath. Because basically this has to go straight back up to the... Um, the APC that I had set up. Which is a lot of redundant cables, but I, I, like I said, I want my battery here. Come on. So it's weird that it runs like this, but uh, it serves a purpose. Now, as you can see, it's important to have uh, everything sort of well labeled because if this wasn't color coded, this would start to look confusing, right? We have so many different weird colors everywhere. Also, I have a random blue pipe. <laughs> Oops. Why was that? I don't even know. Um. And this will be the critical systems battery. And I guess that needs to likewise be painted green to color code. Uh, but again, I don't have time to finish this project off. Uh, so what we did this episode is to convert over our atmospherics to a new kit battery. This battery here, um, is going to be moved. Before I actually end this episode, let's just move this battery 
Uh, and as you can see, we have room for one more. Uh, you can also install batteries on this ceiling, which I might end up doing uh, in the future as well. Uh, or on walls and things like that. Actually, I guess they don't... Yeah. Uh, what I could do is stack them up or something. I don't know. I'll have to figure out uh, a method to, to store more batteries. But, uh, alright, so... I'm also, next up is we're going to have to rip out a lot of this defunct cabling here and start coloring it appropriately. Uh, big projects, big projects to come. So if you have any tips, trips, feedback for me, drop me a line. I hope that uh, I covered some fundamental gameplay mechanics like fuses this episode for educational purposes. Right, right. Not for me to blow out uh, and make micro fireworks. And I'll catch you all later. So thank you all very much for watching. Adios.